Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence tonight. What a joy it is to be with you on a Wednesday night. I know my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life because my sins have been washed away because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. What a joy it is to be with you tonight. I trust you've had a good week, and, and we're excited about tonight. It's a little different for us. The first part of this service will be uh, highlighting, spotlighting a little bit of the Amplify here in just a moment. And uh, while they're uh, getting ready, I want to just say uh, thank you for all the prayers this week. Uh, Titus got his driver's license. Stay off the sidewalks. Amen. And uh, these uh, children around here are growing up quite quickly. And uh, I think Mariah might have been just as excited, if not more excited, than Titus was. I th guess she's tried to ride in with mom and dad. And uh, so uh, they left early this morning and, and uh, went to Chick-fil-A for breakfast before school. And uh, they made it safely. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, uh, I am taking donations to the Odom Insurance Fund for automobile insurance. Wow, I tell you one thing, if you're not there, you just wait till you get there, amen. My, 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 my. I added up what it's going to cost me for the year and divided it by 12, and I could make a nice car payment almost for what they're charging me just in insurance. But I guess that's the way it goes, better to have it than not have it, amen. And uh, so thank you for that, it's been a great week, and just looking forward to what God's doing. Had a great leadership meeting Monday night, uh, we've got a lot of stuff on the horizon happening uh, both in ministry aspects and in just uh, events and uh, and things around the campus. So thank you leaders and church for letting us do that. We're just excited about what God is doing. And that's what tonight is about. There will be a few moments. i got a list of things here that these guys are going to be doing. But uh, I'm just excited about what uh, is happening in our children, whether it be the Amplified kids or the youth kids. And the uh, reason we're doing this is three or four or five of them are going to be transitioning out of Children's Church into the youth group here in the coming weeks. And so they wanted to use their talents as a group for the Lord. And so I'm going to uh, just turn this over to them. They've already practiced. Pastor Ricky gave me the outline. Miss Christy did. So I'm going to just turn it over to them, and they can do what they need to do. Will you welcome Amplify to this platform tonight? Stone. It's down 
surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor. They have the strength to stand. I keep calling out my name in the life of me. Reminded me of all the times you tried before I failed. The way I keep on telling me Time and time again, boy, you never win. You never win. And the voice of truth tells me a different story. And the voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, This is for my glory. And all the voices calling out to me I would choose to listen and believe the voice of truth Oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith that takes the crown for a grown up man Onto the crashing waves Step out of my comfort zone into the realm, be alone where Jesus is. He's holding out his hand. The waves are calling out my name and laughing me. Reminding me of all the times I tried before and failed. The to keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you never win. Never will. And the voice of truth tells me a different story. And the voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, This is for my glory. And all the voices calling out to me. I would choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. so many changes what's the news for today somebody's hurt somebody's aching somebody's trying to find a way a heavy heart can break your will trouble so keeps time standing still if you're hurting please don't hide lift up your head I'm on your side and every mountain seems to hide and every when all my dreams are lost I see That's when my Jesus rescues me My faith is 
searching for some hope to hold. Those empty hands can leave you waiting and praying for a miracle. But Jesus hears your every cry. He sees the walls that you for today somebody's hurt somebody's aching somebody's trying to find a way a heavy heart can break your will a troubled soul keeps time standing If you're hurting, please don't hide. Lift up your head, I'm on your side. When every mountain seems to hide, and every river looks to wide, when all my dreams are I just want to thank God for opening this door for me. I prayed about it, and uh, he opened the door and let me do this. Um, I'm very proud of them. Um, I'm kind of sad that I'm losing Leah and Mariah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm proud of all of them, and I just ask for prayer. The enemy's been getting a hold of me uh, the last couple of weeks so if y'all can just pray for me and um, thank you for uh, letting us do this and I just want to introduce Kyle he's going to come and say some words and read some scriptures for us
I'm kind of nervous. But stand with me. I'm going to read out of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Te teaching them to them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of um, the world. Jesus said, Go into all nations, not just one. It meaning speak to all not just one but i feel like god has called me into missions because um mm, i went to a conference and jensen frank was preaching but i wasn't old enough to stay in there but i'm glad i went to the children's church that night because this um I forgot her name, but she was really nice, and um, she I was I was obeying her, and I, and I, she she was like, okay, then um, I well we were doing this trust fall, and I had to go up nine feet in the air on a ladder in a trust fall, and I did it, and she she said you got something special planned in your life, and I was like, thank you. Then when I went to I see. Um, he, I was standing up, and the preacher said, um, when, when it moves, I stand up, and that means I got something planned, planned for my life, and I was like, that's too, and then when Papa Hanks was, um, had, we had revival with him, um, I was back there praying, and I was singing for the Holy Ghost, and I looked up, and I saw this Spanish girl stand in the corner, and then I closed my eyes and looked again, and she wasn't there. And that's why I felt I had the heart for missions. And people like us need to go share the gospel with other people. If not, they're they're going to be lost. And we we but we need to share the gospel to other people. Um, I'm going back to verse 20 on Matthew. Um, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way into the even of the earth. Um, even through the hard times, Jesus is with us. If we go to prison and missions, Jesus is still with us. But if we get killed in missions, at least we got somewhere to go. We be playing on it, heaven. And my closing strip scripture would be Mark um, Mark sixteen fifteen, and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature let's pray Lord Jesus thank you for staying on me with the same goodness oh Lord I pray that you will bless the rest of the service and what they have planned in Jesus name Amen Amen. Thank you, Kyle and Amplify. We enjoyed that. Lord bless you. Amen. I want to make a couple real quick announcements. Uh, the the revival at Grace Street Church of God has been canceled. It was supposed to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They had canceled because of the storm. So that means the youth will be not going there Saturday, but instead you will be having youth choir practice. So you still have an event Saturday night. You will be not going to the Tough uh, Youth Revival, but instead you'll be coming here for youth practice. So 6 o'clock youth practice this Saturday. Okay, junior praise team, junior ushers, come back up and uh, get ready to give unto the Lord tonight. I guess it's tough ushers tonight. <laughs>
<laughs> Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity we have to give tonight, Lord. We thank you for our tough ushers tonight that's helping us. We thank you for our junior praise team and amplifying what they did tonight. And Kyle and the way he blessed us and the way he touched us tonight. Thank you for this offering that we're about to receive. Bless those who give and give back unto them, pressed down, shaken together. Lord, meet every need tonight. We give you the praise and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, it's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you've got. Faith, 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 just sing it one more time, girls. Well, it's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. I know it's faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you've got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. I want to jump in before he dismissed them and uh, tell them what an absolute phenomenal job they done tonight. Amen. I won't get to probably see some of them before they leave campus tonight and to uh, all of the Amplify students. Great job. I think they even color coordinated tonight. Black with Gene Bottoms. And uh, they worked hard. I And their hair. Oh, Lord, don't forget about the hair. Oh, Jesus. I heard about that. And um, I was talking to my daughter. I said, um, you're going home with your brother tomorrow after school? Uh, this was on the way home from the ba uh, volleyball game last night. No, sir, I'm staying over all day. And I'm thinking, why? And she's like, we have to make sure we're ready for tomorrow night. We've got to get our songs typed, uh, wrote out who's singing what parts. And we've got to get our hair done. I'm thinking, oh, dear Lord. So I came over today. I was walking through campus and came in the back hallway. And uh, Mariah and Leah were sitting at the end of the hallway where they used to sit when they were little, little girls a long time ago. I said, what are y'all doing? They said, we're writing out the words to make sure we have everything for tonight. So I'm proud of all of them. Kyle was in earlier studying. And uh, somebody has said er uh, earlier today, I happened to ask where Kyle was at. And uh, one of the students, I think, said he's over in the other building praying about his devotion tonight. Just going to tell you, church, it's real. People can say what they want to say about old time Pentecost. It's still right. It's still real. And it's still relevant for our families today. Amen. And I'm proud of each and every, every single one of them. And I'm so thankful for what God is doing. Uh, this was done because summer turn and birthdays. I mentioned Leah turned 12 and she's now in the youth group. I guess you're going to the first youth class tonight. Is that correct? All right. So she'll be there tonight. And uh, Micah turned 10 yesterday. And I told her I was going to sing to her. Where's she at? Oh, she's as close to that back door as she can be. I didn't go to school yesterday and say, I said, I'm going I'm to sing to you, and I'm going to sing to you good. So I won't do it right now, though. I'll wait a little bit longer. Amen. All right, let's dismiss Amplify or Boys and Girls Club, Tough Youth, all of you. All of us but us older folks, dismiss you out to class. Pastor Rick.
Amen. We go to the Lord in prayer at this time with our prayer request. Uh, still remember my brother in prayer, Robin. He's still in the hospital. Uh, his infection level is high and his creatinine level on his kidney is high. So they're talking about putting him on kidney dialysis. So let's just remember Robin in prayer. Uh, Lord's able to touch him and Lord's able to heal him completely. Amen. Any on my left side over here that needs prayer today, we want to... Sister Kara. Yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. Let's remember Sister Wanda Spradlin. Uh, she had surgery today. I just heard that she, uh, a little bit ago that she's out of surgery. She's in recovery, uh, doing very well. She's just a little loopy and all from the medication, but uh, let's still remember her in prayer. She had to have her pacemaker redone and some other things done with her heart today. So let's remember her in prayer. Can you remember Sister Lily in prayer? I've been keeping in contact with her. She's doing better. Uh, she still wants us to remember her prayer. She's still having a little bit of pain in her back. So. Let's just continue to remember her in prayer. Amen. Any others on this side? S Sister Becca. Yes. Yes. Amen. Both of them have bronchitis. Yes. Amen. Just remember Brother Lamar Chapman, yes. Amen. How about on my right side over here? Allie? Okay, remember this family. Amen. Brother Roger? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Amen. Let's just remember. Remember this in prayer. Amen. Your son, Brad? Okay. Yes. Yes. I surgery tomorrow, so let's remember his son in prayer, Brad. Amen. Sister Myra? Okay. Remember Sister Sasser? Sister Joyce?
Amen. Sister Mandy. Sister Christy. Okay. Amen. Let's stand, men, and take these knees to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we praise you. We love you. We adore you. Father, Lord, you see each one of these needs. You see each one of these requests, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray that you intervene and that you touch tonight. Father, Lord, we pray for Robin that's in the hospital, Lord. Father, Lord, you pray for this cratinum level and this uh, uh, infection level, Lord. You're able to heal them, and Lord, you're able to touch them, Lord. Father, Lord, by your stripes we are healed, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for Sister Spradlin that had surgery today, Lord. This in recovery, Lord. We pray that you intervene with her. Give her a speedy recovery from it, Lord. Just heal her and touch her, Lord. In the name of Jesus, touch Sister Lily tonight, Lord. Continue to let your healing power to flow through her body, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Walker, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus and her family, Lord, we pray that you touch them and minister to them, Lord. We pray for Kara's friend. Father, Lord, that you'd intervene in this situation that you would touch, Lord. We pray for Eric, Lord, that you continue to touch him and minister to him, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for Mexico, Lord, and all and uh, Puerto Rico, Lord, and Virgin Islands, and all of these that have suffered from this earthquake and suffered from this uh, hurricane, Lord, and all, from Hurricane Irvin, uh, uh, Irma, Lord, and Hurricane Jose, Lord, and her, Hurricane uh, all these others, Lord. You're able to intervene, and Maria, Lord, and touch, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, each one of these needs and this request, you're able to touch. We pray for Brother and Sister Ashbury, Lord, that you would cut, touch them and minister to them with this bronchitis. Uh, heal them and touch them, Lord. We pray for Brother Chapman that had stents put in his heart today, Lord. We pray that you give him a speedy recovery from this, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Ryan, Lord, that you heal him and touch him, Lord. We pray for Ricky, that you get a hold of his heart and get a hold of his life, Lord. We pray for Susie, Father, Lord, and JC, that you would touch them and minister to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Sister Joyce's request, her friend, Lord. We know that you're able to intervene and bring healing in this body, Lord. Heal and touch, Lord. Sister Sasser, touch him and minister to them. In the name of Jesus, Brother Roger's son that's having surgery on his eyes tomorrow. Father, Lord, you're able to heal. And, Lord, you're able to lead and guide the doctor's hands, Lord. Let there be no problems and let there be no difficulties, Lord. In the name of Jesus, touch Roger's friend uh, whose uh, house is being uh, sunk up in this sinkhole, Lord. You're able to intervene in this situation, Lord. Bring them the comfort and the strength that they need, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, touch Sister Joyner tonight, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch her, Lord. We pray for Allie's friend at work, Lord, who lost a, a loved one, Lord. You're able to intervene in this situation. Comfort and strength, Lord. Every other need and every other request that was mentioned, Lord. You know the needs and you know the circumstances, Lord. Father, Lord, just touch and bless tonight. We thank you in advance for hearing and answering our prayers, Lord. We thank you for the praise report we're going to hear, Lord. We thank you and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Go to the book of Romans tonight. Romans chapter number 12. Take our text from there tonight. Romans chapter number 12. If you love the Lord, say amen. Amen. Good to have you with us on a Wednesday night. 
It's been a good day on campus as far as I know. No one's not told me anything different, so we'll take it. Amen. I tried to just stay in my office today. Probably was best for everybody involved. Now uh, I've been uh, was working on some study for tonight. Started earlier than usual. Realized early on I was telling I think it was the pastor staff this morning that uh, I'm not going to get through all this tonight. There's absolutely no way. But it has uh, just kind of uh, helped me today. And uh, when I go to a restaurant, I like my food to be served hot. When I come to church, I want my church to be red hot. And uh, we're going to see what God will do with us tonight if we'll open up our heart. And I'm going to get us up to the fire tonight. And then maybe next week, I'm going to lay some wood on that fire. We'll see what God has for us. Stand with me, if you will. Romans chapter number 12. Verse number 11, one verse, but I think it's important we stand. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Is that what your Bible says? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. If you'll allow me to read it through another translation not wanting in devotion but on fire with the spirit not wanting in devotion but on fire with the spirit for a little while tonight the Lord helping me I'm going to start on this and we'll go till we get done or you leave me one or the other and I'll pick it back up next week I'm going to preach on this thought religion on fire religion on fire let us pray father we love you tonight thank you for what's already happened in this place tonight for the spirit of god lord that's already moved into this house as we've sung songs of praise and worship lord unto your son and to our savior thank you for our students and thank you for every gift that was given through tithes and offerings lord and thank you for the privilege we've had to bear our burdens and to the one that can heal us all and father i pray now as we've read your word that that word will become alive in our hearts and in our lives and lord, that you anoint me with an anointing that makes it effective. Uh, Lord, allow me to deliver us before us and let our hearts and our minds be touched uh, and we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray and everybody said amen. And amen. You can be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Religion on fire. Religion on fire. When I go to a restaurant, I like my food to be served hot. Amen. How many of you watched that, that movie War Room? It gives that lady that coffee uh, lukewarm. I don't like coffee at all. I think it stinks. I think you're, I'm not old enough for it. I'm not young enough for it. I don't know what it is. My wife says if I ever start, I probably would drink it all day long. But I cannot handle the smell of it at all. Of any flavor, any sort, any anything. And somebody in that office today made some coffee in the afternoon. And I don't know what they put in it or what flavor it was. They have one of those machines over there. I think um, I even helped buy some of the stuff to go in the machine. But I don't drink it. But I do know if you're going to drink coffee, coffee my understanding is if it's supposed to be hot coffee you want it hot amen and i know they got this ice coffee out but ice coffee just don't even really make sense to me maybe because i don't drink it i don't understand it but i guess if it's supposed to be hot it needs to be hot and if it's supposed to be cold it needs to be cold i don't like it lukewarm religion if you will allow me to use it as a basis religion is a hot dish and in order for religion to be something that is uh, desired and something that is nurturing and something that is filling. It must be served and piping hot and cold a formal ritualistic religion is not going to cut the deal anymore in the life in which we live and a cold and formal religion has no attraction to those that, that have a sincere heart and John Wesley said get on fire and people will come to watch you burn get on fire 
people will come and watch you burn. Religion is a flame that is attractive. Uh, and much of the indifference to religion in our day can be attributed to the condition of the church. We're in a, a situation where we are just going through the motions. We are, we're snug in what we've got. We're sedated in where we're at. Um, many ministers, it seems, are painting to, to uh, are preaching to paint and to varnish and, and, and to pews rather than people because uh, it seems that the messages that they're delivering have no fire in them anymore. I say, God, uh, I realize that every time you get behind a pulpit, it may not be hellfire and brimstone to every single person every time I preach, but Lord, every now and then, uh, I want to know that I've heard from heaven, uh, and I want to know that it's touched the heart of people, uh, and I want to know that it's been fiery, uh, and I want to know that it's helped somebody get to heaven. Why? Because I don't want to go through a ritual. I don't want to go through an organizational process. Uh, I want to have a religion uh, that is a relationship with the Most High God uh, that sets the world on fire. Now, fire is a crowd getter. John the Baptist was burning and a shining according to John chapter 5. And all Jerusalem came out to hear him preach in the wilderness. You want people to follow you as you follow Christ? You get full of the Holy Ghost and with fire and you see what they will do. Why? Because fire is a crowd getter. John the Baptist could attract people, uh, did not attract people through his eloquent speech, his polished speech, or his organizational ability. But because he was the voice of one quiet in the wilderness and he was set afire and he was a flame for God. People would come to hear what John the Baptist had to say. On the day of Pentecost fire came down and set upon the heads of each of those that were in the upper room and the result of it was now it was noised abroad the multitude came together. You want to grow, draw a crowd of people? You want to grow a ministry? You want to grow a class, you want to go a youth group, you get on fire and see what God will do for it. The result was it was noise to God. Oh, I wish somebody would know that we're here on the side of Lakewood. Amen. I don't mean here just in a format and going through a process, but I truly have a desire in my heart for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire and that multitudes will come together to be used by and, and, and to be drawn closer to this fire of the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, would you one more time set us on fire? Now, an ice wagon, wagon that carries ice, attracts but one person every now and then. But when the fire bells ring and they begin to clang and the whistles begin to blow, almost everyone is at attention. If you're in your yard and you hear the sirens go by, you're going to do what everybody else does. You're going to at least look and see which way they're headed. For some of us and for some of you, you might want to go a little further and hop in the car and follow them down the road. I wouldn't advise that, but you understand what I'm saying. When the fire bell rings and the whistles begin to blow, everyone is attentive. Individuals rush from their homes. They leave their places of business. They drive their automobiles at breakneck speeds in order to see the fire. Been amazed the devastation that's happened because of the hurricanes. And it just seems the more you watch, the more there is. I was thinking recently about the fires in Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge area, and how I think 10 months now it's been, and it seems that most of the grass has begun to grow. The growth is there, and, and very little signs of that. But for those people that were impacted in their homes and in their businesses, uh, they're not going to easily forget. Why? Because fire, fire is something that everybody wants to see. And if the church of today would have a desire to track the masses of people. We have to realize that we must become a flaming torch of truth. It must be more than just a process. It must be more than just lukewarmness. and It must be more than just a ritual. But we must be a flaming torch of truth in the middle of a crooked and perverse generation. And I said, Lord, what I want on a Wednesday night is not just religion, but I want religion that has been set on fire by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the message of Jesus Christ 
which he said and signified by his servant John to the Laodicean church was this in Revelation chapter 3. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase me goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou may see. Writing to the church here in Revelations chapter 3, we have a very, very plain picture of a church that is lukewarm. A church that is not hot, that is not cold, that is busy doing things, but is lukewarm. Can I remind us tonight that it is Christ's desire that the church be aflame. It is Christ's desire that we be on fire. Evidently, the Laodicean church was doctrinally sound, and there was no argument against the organization of that church. But they had become mechanical, and they had become lukewarm in their operation. And I begin to think about that church, and think about our church, and think about churches that I know, I say, God, there's a place for everything. There's a place for organization. There's a place for mechanics. But Lord, don't let it sit down into the sanctuary. And don't let it become part of what the altar consists of. And Lord, let us realize that we come to a setting on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday nights not to go through a ritual or some mechanics, but to have an encounter with an almighty God. The church today has wandered a far distance from the pattern of the early church. When the church church was born, it was a time when the Holy Ghost of God was active and people looked on with amazement and were confounded at the supernatural manifestations and, and operations that they would behold with their own eyes. And I say, God, I believe you can do it one more time. God, I believe you can set some fire burning in this place. One more time. Number one tonight, the church needs to be stirred. And I'm not talking about an emotional experience. I'm not talking about something that makes us feel good, but I'm talking about a real earth-shaking stir. So many Christians today are like the, like Rip Van Winkle. Maybe you'll remember him. They come to life during a revival and then go back to sleep. Get a guess, in for a few days they'll amen them they'll shout them they'll, they'll hallelujah with them he leaves and they go back to sleep to the next revival it's not the kind of religion I want get, you, you get, get a good Sunday morning service or a good Sunday night service and they'll come alive for that service and they'll go back to sleep for three or four or five more months maybe they'll be there maybe they won't you never know because you never hear them I said Lord let us not go to sleep there's nothing worse than, than dead religion. There's nothing worse than, than going through the process. Can I remind you uh, that if you are dead and you're floating on life sea dead, uh, you're just there going wherever the currents of life take you. I believe my life is more important than that to God. I believe his plan for me is more important than just being a piece of lifeless flesh that floats along the life of uh, the sea of life. I believe, I believe I have more in my life to do than to drift and float with the current. And I say, Lord, it seems that in many churches today there is an absence of anything related to fire. And it's kind of just stirred me up today. Spent time this morning. I didn't come in early this morning. I made it for a staff meeting at 10. I think I was two or three minutes late. They didn't tell me. Made it in for a staff meeting. We spent the next hour or so just talking and planning and doing what we do on Wednesday mornings at 10. Had a few errands to run after, after the noontime hour with Sister Wendy and but before that, and when I got back from that, spent most of the day just studying and meditating would pop out every now and then. Why? Because I said, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for what we had Sunday morning, and I'm thankful for what we had Sunday night, but 
God, I don't want to go back to sleep now and it be three or four or five more Sundays before we have that again. God, I want it to be a desire. I want it to be a hunger. I want it to be a longing that every time we come together that we expect God to move in His house. Not an expectation as if He owes us something. Because I'm reminded He owes me absolutely nothing. But an expectation because His Word says two or three are gathered in His name, He'll be there. I said, Lord, don't let me have a name that says I'm alive but dead. And I believe we can pull some information from the church at Sardis in Revelation chapter 3. It says, I know thy works that thou hast a name and that thou livest, but thou art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Say, God, if I'm going to claim to be Pentecostal, I need to be Pentecostal. If I'm going to claim to be church of God, I need to be church of God. If I'm going to claim to be a pastor and a spirit-filled husband and father and individual, I need to be that everywhere I go. Why? Because if we're going to say we're one thing, we need to be able to produce it on the inside. Can somebody say amen? Found it this way. If the church is going to advertise, if the church is going to hang out its shingles, it must have the practice inside. If the church is going to advertise its product, it better have some goods on the shelf. This past weekend, I was listening to a service, and I'll call names, don't fall out with me. If you don't like them, it'll be all right. But I was actually watching one of the services from the homecoming revival of Tommy Bates, and our overseer was preaching that service. And it took me like, I don't know, two or three or four days to listen to like a 40-minute message just with everything going on and having to back up and listen again. But I remember one thing he said. Our overseer, Dr. Hill, was there preaching in that independent church there. And, and he, said, uh, he said, I stood up at an MIP commissioning service a few months ago, and I thought, yeah, that would have been me, Bishop. He says, and before I realized what I, I'm paraphrasing, but before I realized what I said, I told that group of interns, uh, if we're going to be Pentecostal, we need to put up or shut up. And it kind of just caught me off guard. And it kind of just set the back of my mind. And we went through Sunday morning. We went through Sunday night. And I found myself in studying. And I made a note here to tell you that story. Why? Because I want to be true to what I say I am. And if we believe in the power of God, we need to act like we believe in the power of God. If we believe living right and holiness is right and dedicated to the Lord is right and holiness is the way to heaven and the Spirit is for us now, we need to do what we say we're going to do. found this illustration. It kind of sums it up for me. It says years ago, it was told by a preacher, years ago when this preacher was a young teenager, he worked in a bargain store in a large city. The owner of that store invited the young lad to go with him to purchase some goods. While there, the owner of the store purchased one pair of shoes. The young lad could not see the point in the owner buying only one pair of shoes since he would not be able to advertise them. So upon returning, the young lad asked of the owner why he only purchased one pair of shoes. His answer was, he wanted them for a window display. He said he would put an enticing price on the shoes. Thus, he would lure customers into his store and he would sell them something else. To the young lad, this was seemed to be a hypocritical practice. He was advertising something that he did not have on his shelf. Much religion today is merely decoration and window display. And I went, help us, Jesus. Much of religion, see, religion will send you to hell just as fast as anything else will. Because I'm not in it for religion. I'm in it for a relationship. 
And religion in most of places, I would say today, at least a lot. Our decoration and window display. Men and women are putting on the front with no goods on the shelf. And if the church is going to profess the fullness of the Spirit and make its claim to the world, we better have something to offer them. When they walk inside these four walls. We was in the staff meeting today and one of our workers came over from the school side. You just got to live through this world with us. We have church side and school side and Sometimes it's every side, amen. We were, I was on the church side having a church meeting with pastoral staff and my assistant and, and uh, knock on the door and the school secretary came over and she says, hey, someone's out here and she needs to speak with you. And I said, okay, well, who is it? So they brought her in and, and she wasn't feeling well. One of our staff members, we stopped right in the middle of the staff meeting and had prayer and I couldn't get to her because where I was, I said, Pastor, just lay hands on her right where you're at and pray for her right now. And they did and Dustin was in there and Christy was in there and we prayed and, and I said, Lord, uh, it's important to be busy about the, bis- about the kingdom work, but let us have enough of God inside of us that when we need to stop on a Wednesday morning and just have prayer, let us have enough God that we can do that. Why? Because there's still some things that we just got to pray all the way through. And I said, God, let us come to these services and let, let, let us have a fire inside of us that, that is real and that is evident. Don't let it just be in, in, in process. Don't let it just be in our mechanics. Don't let it just be in our organization. Let it be evident in everything that we do. Uh, we should not be a church merely in name, uh, but in evidence and in practice. Uh, we cannot stay alive in name only. We cannot stay alive just saying, I attend that church. Say, God, I need something inside of me. Everywhere the early church went, there was a stir. Acts 19 and 23, speaking of Ephesus, it says, there arose no small stir about that way. I say, God, I love for some folks in Okoye to go uptown and it go uptown. That's my start coming out in me. Uh, go, go to town and, and, uh, and it calls a stir in the marketplace wherever you go. It just caught up with me that I was from the backwoods of nowhere. Amen. When I grew up, we went to town. I'm going to go to town. They pick on me when I say that. They're like, you live in the city, Pastor. Well, I'm still going to town. When I go to Walmart, I'm going to town. I wish that we would have some fire that would stir up inside of us and would turn our town upside down. At Thessalonica, the Apostle Paul was termed the word upsetter. For they said of him in chapter 17 and verse 6, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. I must tell you my heart is saddened when I see people who whose countenance once radiated and reflected the glory of God but now it seems that they're just in a formal and a backslidden stage it seems they're dying their flames are smoldering and I say Lord what happened to that once bright experience they had with you Lord I said they need to cry out as those foolish virgins did in Matthew 25 when they said give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. See what we need is a another stir. What we need is for the Spirit of God to take his finger and dip it back into our heart one more time and stir us up. What we need for him to do is to break that crust that has set on the top of our life. Well, it still looks okay from a distance, but when I get close enough and I begin to tap the top of it, I realize it's crusted over because there's been, there's been no fire. There's been no heat. There's been no spirit. I say, God, would you one more time dip down in our heart and stir us? See, that was the desire of Paul for a young man named Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 6 when he said, stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Another illustration that I came across while reading today. Maybe you remember some of this. The old, uh, the only way of heating your home back years ago was an open fireplace. And this story went on to say at midnight, grandmother would smother the fire with ashes and let it smolder through the night. The next morning you could hear grandmother stirring around and it was chilly and the air was crisp. And she would pull the ashes off the smoldering embers 
and put some rich pine kindling on the fire and it began to and she began to flame it again into a crackling flame. In a few moments she would call for her children to get up and to warm themselves by the fire. Why? Because the fire had been rekindled. If she had let it if she had let it lie long enough, it would have gone out. But she said no, just in time she'd put that new wood on there and fan it. Concerned tonight that we've let our experience set too long without the wind of the Holy Ghost fanning our flames. Concerned tonight for some of us that we've go through the motions and the process. We let the fire die out. I said, oh God, the Holy Ghost would come again as that rushing mighty wind. and It would fan the smoldering embers of our experience into flames of Pentecost one more time. I made this statement. I copied it and put it in my notes. Made it mine when I did. And I liked it so much that I put it out on my social media page a couple hours ago. And it's got a few comments back, believe it or not, already. And I made this statement. There are some who are worried about extreme emotionalism and fanaticism when we talk about a spiritual fire. But I'm not so much worried about frying and emotionalism as I am about dry rot in the church. And I thought, wow. What is dry rot? If you'll allow me to give you a layman's term of that, when something sits somewhere long enough where it's covered a piece of wood on the ground underneath it, it's just going to dry right away. I said, Lord, I believe the Spirit of God is big enough to take care of the Spirit of God. And I believe if a corner over here or a corner over there gets the wrong fire going, the Spirit of God has put people in place to take care of that. Spirit of God can handle it without anybody's help, but will use vessels if he needs to. But I said, Lord, I sure would have a, I sure would like to deal with a little bit of fire around here than just some rotten, dry, rotten wood on church pews. And I said, Lord, what about me and what about my family? It's been a world of change for us this year. We went through some more first this week. I got up. Monday morning or Tuesday morning and took Titus to the DMV to get his license. Just as I did his sister two and a half years ago almost, I sat in that parking lot at the DMV and I went through my list of rules. I said, if you can agree to all these rules, you can turn that truck off, we'll go in there and I'll sign for you to get your driver's license and whatever else you need, I'll call the insurance company and put you on there. Whatever we need to do to make it right. I said, but if you don't agree with those rules, put this thing in reverse and take me to the house. Obviously, he put it in park and he turned it off and we went in. I did with him just as I did with Cherith. Got those licenses and we drove back to the house. I got in my vehicle, he was in his vehicle, and I followed him to school that day. I'd done all I could do at that point. Got a call from Cherry this week and Last night, I think it was. Monday night, I don't remember. She was as talkative as probably I've seen her in a long time. I mean, the girl just would not hush. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking, dear Lord, what is she taking? I don't want to share all that she's been involved in. You'll begin seeing it in a few days, hopefully, on social media and her blog and videos. She's excited. You know, a whole lot I can do about it. She's excited. And Dad, I need this, and I need this address, and what about this address? And what a, Let me tell you what she did to me. I told Pastor Dustin, she comes home in a few weeks, and I, I know where I'm going. I'm going to get us back to the fire, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to illustrate something. here. She comes home in a few weeks, and she'll be here before homecoming, for our homecoming services. And the weekend prior to that, we have an event we need to go to, and I, I volunteered her to watch Pastor Dustin's kids. Now, I don't know if he'll take me up on that or not. But I said, Cherry will be home. I'm sure she'll be delighted to watch them. They need to go with us to that event. He told me last night or today, this week, he said, well, I reached out to Cherith and about that event, and 
her comment back to me was, well, she's not sure where she's going to be that weekend, so she couldn't confirm to that quite, couldn't, couldn't agree to that quite yet. And I looked at him and I said, where she's going to be that weekend, she's going to be at my house where she belongs that weekend. I know what she meant because in talking with her the last few days, she's excited about what God is doing and she says, Dad, do you think I can go out and they call it itinerate? Can I go out and itinerate when I get home? I had to think real hard what itinerate meant. Basically, she wants to line up a few churches to go to and share her program and share her calling and maybe she can drum up a little more support for her while she's gone and I said, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mind you doing that. I said, but, but that first weekend's homecoming, and you're going to be at Okoy. Okay, Dad, that, that's good, Dad. But I, then I got two more weekends. That's four more services. I said, we'll do our best to get you something lined up to go itinerate. I watched that happen. I watched Titus, what God's doing in his life. I watched some of your babies on this platform tonight. Your babies are like my babies. I pray for them and pray with them and aggravate them and get on to them if they need it. Trust me, just ask them. They'll tell you. But I watched my baby sit up here tonight too. She made Daddy feel proud. I don't know if you could see her from where you were, but she had her pen in her hand. And there was only five of them in that choir, but she was, she was directing them just a little bit. I thought, yep, she's seen somebody do that before. I said that to say this. I do not want to go through service after service after service and there be no fire. Because this world is offering things to our kids. Trying to sell them a bill of goods. But I know if they can ever get a touch of the fire, it will change them forever and that's why I preach to us on a Wednesday night about not getting in a mode of religion call it what you want if you want to call it religion call it religion but let it be religion on fire why because they're looking to us to be the examples you know why they got up here and held a microphone because they've seen you do it you know why they got up here with black tops and jean bottoms? They've seen you do it. You know why Kyle opened his Bible and read his scripture? And I think, I think he said, let's stand, if I remember correctly. Forgot to have a set down, but that's just nervous energy. I forgot to do that a couple times. Read his devotion, gave from his heart. And at the end said, bow your heads and let's pray. We could have went home after that and say we've been in church. Where they get that from? They've seen something in your life. And if they're going to continue to move forward in Christ, they need the fire of the Holy Ghost. And they're only going to know more about that fire as they seek the Lord themselves and see it demonstrated in our life. A Texas evangelist was preaching with a great deal of fire and zeal in the tent meeting. The pastor told him to put on the brakes. For he was preaching too hard. I love what this evangelist replied. He said, God didn't call me to be a brakeman. He called me to be a fireman. I haven't used this, but one day I'm going to get bold enough to use it. When somebody asks me what I do for a living, I'm going to tell them I sell fire insurance. You'll figure that one out later. Can you say Amen. Number two, fire is a symbol of God's presence. I'll hurry through these next couple. Come on, baby, when you're done. Fire is a symbol of God's presence. Throughout the Bible, the presence of God is all, it has been symbolized by fire. When Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, on the backside of the desert, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and beheld the bush burn with fire, and the bush was not consumed. It was out of that bush that God called Moses. Uh, out of that bush signifying that the fire was a symbol of God's presence I say God would you let that fire fall one more time God would you let that fire fall the Lord led the children of Israel by fire through the night 
The Lord went before them by day with a pillar of a cloud to lead them, but by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. When the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, the Bible says in chapter 19, verse 18 of that same book, Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Fire is a symbol of God's presence. And thirdly tonight, fire provides protection. Have you ever seen someone backslide who is on fire for the Lord? Think about it. Have you ever seen somebody backslide who is on fire for the Lord? In olden days, possibly still in some areas today, shepherds build fires around their flock to ward off beasts of prey. And just as they do that in the natural, the fire of God will serve as a wall around the Christian protecting us from the snare of the enemy. Zechariah 2 and 5, For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. When Elisha was being pursued by Benadad with his thousands of chariots, he was not worried because he was being protected by the chariots of fire that were round about him. I don't believe I'm stretching it when I would say the fire burning brightly in a man's heart is a guarantee against sin. Problem is we've let the fire kind of die. Those who are troubled with the world are those whose flame is dying. It's an old adage. I haven't heard this old adage. Maybe you have. But the old adage I found today says, flies don't settle on a hot tea kettle. God gives us the fire in our hearts. But He expects us to keep it burning. He puts that fire there so we can use it for protection, symbolize His presence. And lastly tonight, that fire will generate some power. The words of John the Baptist in Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus said to his disciples in that parting message he delivered, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. So I would offer to you tonight, we can't do anything without the fire. Organization is good. But without a touch of the Spirit of God, we're dead weight. A car with 12 cylinders is no better than one with four cylinders if there's no spark. A freight train can be loaded and everything in order with every workman in his place. But if there's no fire in the engine, no freight will be moved. Proverbs 26 and 20, and I'll close with this. Solomon said, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Tonight, we need some fire. Next week, we're going to put wood on that fire. But if there's not already a fire burning, that wood will do you no good. So our prayer tonight is going to be, Lord, how's my fire? Lord, how's the fire in my life? And you know if it's there or not. You know if it's been, been tended to this week or not. Tonight, we're going to gather on these altars. We're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to rebuild and rekindle the fire of His Spirit in our life. And next week, if God will help me, I'm going to lay some wood on that fire. At least three of them, I think. If God lets me. But we might not make it the next week. i got to have the fire tonight. Can you say amen? Would you come and tell me on this altar? Let's pray. Let's ask God to be with us. Let's ask God to 
Rekindle that fire. Make it brighter and stronger than it's ever been before. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in your house tonight. Thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost, God, that's evident in our hearts and in our lives. We'll yield them to you. Father, I pray tonight as we come to an altar of prayer, Lord, that we will check ourselves to see if there's fire. Lord, not fire from another source, not fire that's man-made, but fire that has been given to us by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let our hearts be on fire. Let our lives be different. Let us be a light to this world, God. Help us tonight, I pray, O Spirit of God. Help us tonight, I pray, sweet Jesus. Use us, God. Use us tonight, I ask, Lord, and help us to be led by your Spirit. Let that fire burn.
Hallelujah. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. How many of you want the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn? Nothing man-made, but prayed down from above. Amen. Amen. What a joy it's been to have you with us in church tonight. Before we dismiss, let me welcome my fellow minister in the back. I thought I'd recognized you guys from somewhere. You've been here before. And uh, former pastor over at the Zellwood Church. Lives in West Virginia, if I remember correctly now. And they told me, and I remember what they said visiting with us tonight, his sister, and what a joy it is to have you with us. So go by and welcome them. And uh, can your prayer this week be, God, let the fire burn? Because I'm telling you, if God will help me next Wednesday night, we're going to stop. You know, there's enough debris around. I could probably find me some wood. Roger Belance probably got enough for me to borrow three pieces. Going to bring some wood next week, and we're going to build a fire. It's an illustration, a demonstration of what God can do in our heart. Amen. Stand with me. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the word of the Lord. Go with us and strengthen us and bring us back on Sunday. We'll forever give you the praise and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you back Sunday morning.